Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we're gonna be looking at four of the Concept Series Iron Man figures. These are from the first batch of figures. Maybe not the first batch, but they're not from Iron Man 2. They're, they're prior to Iron Man 2. And in this, we are gonna be looking at the Stealth Strike Iron Man, the Inferno Armor, Torpedo Armor, and Satellite Armor. Now, these are really just two different molds. We have the Inferno one and the Stealth Strike, the exact same figure minus the backpack and paint and plastic, obviously. And these two are the exact same figure as each other minus paint and plastic and accessories. And actually, these two are the same as the Mark II and some of the standard Iron Man figures as well. So we're going to actually just look at the two of them in detail, and then we'll, I'll just show you the little details separately. So Stealth Strike Iron Man is right here grab the wrong one he's got the fins a lot of them have the fins which is not the best situation but they do have them i don't really care for that too much but it is a pretty good build overall it's got the uh, riveted shoulder pads and he's got two pieces in each shoulder pad actually so that's pretty nice you know what let's set these guys down so this is basically a gray and dark gray and red version of Iron Man, similar to the Stealth, but not exactly like the Stealth suit. His backpack is not nearly as cool as you would think. It only has two positions, which is like this, closed, and then you press this button and it opens. But it only opens a little bit, which is kind of a bummer. It's got a nice sculpt, nice paintwork. And it does work, but it would have been nice for it to open up a little bit more, maybe. Not a huge deal either way. Pretty cool. And this is actually just one of my favorite of the concept armors, just because it has a really nice look to it with the red eyes. Kind of War Machine-esque. As far as articulation goes, it's standard Iron Man articulation, ball-jointed head with a hinge, so you can get him to look up just fine. Look down. Anything you need to do, no trouble there. I already mentioned the shoulder pads. Those are connected to the actual shoulders, which is a ball hinge, so that's nice. There's a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, wrist swivel, and wrist pivot. He's got the diaphragm joint that lets him come back a little bit, not too far forward, no side to side, just the rotation. Y jointed hips, and double jointed knees. There's a thigh swivel built in, and there's an ankle pivot and an ankle rotation. So pretty standard batch of articulation there. Very similar to what we ended up seeing in the Iron Man 2 figures. And like I said, this one has the exact same build. It's just made out of translucent red plastic with gold paint, which actually looks pretty cool, though I'm not a fan of the translucent plastic. He's got one of the more traditional blasters that we've seen with a lot of the Iron Man figures, and that connects through a soft piece to his backpack, which is just another backpack. So nothing really special there. It does come off just like the other one. And this guy, he's okay. I don't really care for the, the clear plastic as much. It looks a little cheap because of it, I think. Still a decent figure. And that is the Inferno armor. I'll set those aside. Now we have the one that's built on the standard Iron Man body. This is the torpedo armor. He's got two guns that connect to these back pieces. We'll pull those off for the sake of the review. These missiles actually had pieces that stuck out farther, but the person that had this originally cut them off. So these just, uh, how do they fire even? I don't know how they fire. Uh-oh. Maybe they don't fire. They do fire. I don't know how they fire. I can't figure it out. What gives? I don't know. Anyway, they do fire. And this one can also receive one of those missiles and fire it as well, but they didn't give you one for that, so it's a little odd that they chose to not include it. He has these things on his back, like the one War Machine figure did from the first batch of Iron Man figures, and that lets the guns come up, but they are really close to his head, so it's going to be pretty hard to pose him in a good way. He's got the original shoulder pads that pop off really easily, but that's okay because they're not going to break as long as you don't lose them. You still have full range of motion in the ball hinge with a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, wrist swivel, and pivot. Can't quite get the hands up to do the repulsor blast, and the fingers are posed in a way that's not really conducive for that anyway. So it's kind of a bummer. The head... Pretty limited in the articulation department. All you're really going to get is the swivel and just a little bit of up and down. So another kind of a bummer there. He's got the diaphragm joint, full swivel, leans back pretty well, leans forward pretty well, 
no side to side other than the swivel. Wide jointed hips, bicep, or I keep saying bicep, thigh swivel, double jointed knees, pretty ugly though, and this has a hinge plus the swivel. So these guys are the exact same build. This one comes with the two-way blaster that we actually saw in the second iteration of Titanium Man. Maybe a couple others had this as well. It shoots two missiles, clips onto the wrist just like normal. And he also has a satellite for his backpack because he's satellite armor. And it's made out of translucent plastic and it's got paint on it to hide that. It is articulated with these soft tubey thingies. But I'm not, I'm not a real big fan of this because it just looks really clunky. And to be honest, I don't care for the white and black version as much. I like the silver and black version a little bit better. But this one's not too bad. It's, it's okay. Some people are going to like it. I don't particularly. It just looks kind of cheap with that white paint on it. Hopefully you can see that. It's not showing up all that well. It's so bright. But there you have it. Those are four of the concept armors. This one being... This one being my favorite out of the bunch, I do like this one a lot too, but they're just, uh, I don't know if they're necessary must-haves unless you're building an armory, otherwise you might want to just stick to the more traditional Iron Man armors. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for more figure reviews, more custom figures, and other good stuff, and in the meantime, keep collecting.